If you think that many theme park incidents that we've covered so far in our mini videos are horrific and quite alarming, then just wait to hear about the mother of all amusement park incidents. In most recent theme park and carnival incidents, fatalities are often very few, while injuries are more common. But there's one incident that you may never have heard of that resulted in 28 deaths and nearly 200 injuries. This horrific, nightmarish massacre took place in the Russian capital Moscow in 2004 at what used to be Europe's biggest domed water park. Stick around to learn how this unprecedented water park massacre unfolded and why experts believe that it was quite preventable. In June 2002, Europe's largest domed water world Transvaal Aquapark opened to the eager masses in the Yasinovo district of Moscow. It was a very joyous day for Russians, and especially the 11 million Greater Moscow area residents who really needed more modern, domed, warm, and fun parks to visit during the long, harsh winters. The massive five-acre water park was really impressive and unique, and it represented a major milestone for Russia's theme park industry. People from around the world visited Moscow just to check out this wondrous water world, especially during the notoriously cold Moscow winter season when the temperature outside would be as low as minus 31 Fahrenheit and it would be 90 inside the park. It was just awesome. It featured unique heated pools, it had a wave pool and a giant twisting river for tubing, a lot of cool slides for both children and adults. At saunas, bubble jacuzzis, restaurants, a bowling alley, solarium, and even a world-class gym. The Transvaal Aquapark was envied by the whole of Europe at the time because it was quite modern and it was a fun, massive paradise. It was even named after the warm and beautiful Transvaal province of South Africa. However, the joy and happiness associated with this magnificent water park paradise amongst Russians and tourists alike didn't last because less than two years after it opened, it became known as Nightmare Park. Everything changed on February 14th of 2004. The temperatures outside were freezing and very cold, and at least a few thousand people had been going in and out of the park since it opened early that morning. At 7.15 p.m., more than 800 people were inside the Transvaal Aqua Park, having the time of their lives. They were scattered around other various attractions, but nearly 300 people were present in the central massive pool that consists of various sections with several slides leading to it. Everything was fine, and there was nothing out of the ordinary, when suddenly a loud, loud bang brought the whole park to a complete freeze. And within two seconds, it began raining small and large pieces of glass, concrete, support beams of various sizes, and, well, you name it. It was almost as if hell had opened its gates and begun screaming death at the patrons in the doomed park. Everything began to fall apart on the heads of the people below. Half of them were children. Rides, slides, internal structures, kiosks, everything that made the park a paradise was shattered. It was not an incident, but rather a massacre. Blood filled the pools and the floors. People were buried under the rubble and they were screaming in agony and pain. Children were crying next to their injured, unconscious parents. It was horror from hell and it was quite graphic. People began running to the doors and stepping on sharp glass. Even the pavement and street outside became littered with blood. The horror didn't even spare the park staff. It was so chaotic, people from the area began running inside to rescue people and didn't know where to start. There were simply too many people that were injured, unconscious, trapped, buried beneath rubble and steel. Too many people screaming. Too many children crying. It was, it was like a war zone. And to make things worse, it started getting really cold as the freezing wind rushed to turn the warm aqua paradise into a bloody, freezing hell. Within minutes, people started getting frostbite because they were in swimwear. Ambulances and police units from across Moscow rushed to the scene and they too struggled to comprehend the scope of the disaster. For a whole 24 hours, ambulances didn't stop transferring the injured as rescue teams carefully dug below the rubble looking for signs of life. They even had to keep it down in order to hear trapped people who struggled to scream for help. The crash site was also quite dangerous as rescuers feared that more of the structure would collapse. In the first hours after the rescue, rumors began to circle that it was a terrorist attack. The authorities simply needed quick answers to tame the angry masses and thus the rumors played to their interest. However, even though Russia was still known for widespread corruption at the time, the political elites and mayor's office didn't swallow the bait, nor were they about to allow rumors letting the real culprits get away with their crimes. There was something wrong, and they knew it. Within 12 hours of the incident, the FSB put an end to the terrorist attack rumors, and they declared that the building roof simply collapsed. Soon, they quietly began rounding up all the top engineers and heads of construction firms and suppliers who were involved in the construction process. The owners of the park were not spared either. To put the scope of the disaster into perspective for you, imagine this. The incident happened on Saturday evening, and by Monday late afternoon, the rescuers were still looking for people under the rubble because records showed that 17 people were still missing. 
On Tuesday, the numbers were declared and it brought the whole country to a standstill. 28 people were dead, including eight children. 193 people were injured, including 51 children. 78 of them also needed long-term care. And 23 of them were still in intensive care when the announcement was made. Russia's no-nonsense president was furious, and it made politicians and bureaucrats sleepless for weeks looking for answers. They even hired local and international specialist investigators to solve the mystery. You might wonder why we said mystery. The answer had to do with the fact that the building was very modern, an engineering marvel made of reinforced concrete, steel, giant beams. The glass was reinforced, and it was advertised as the safest building in the whole of Moscow. It wasn't supposed to be brought down for another 120 years. Something was very wrong, and it mystified investigators. The engineering plans and blueprints looked solid, and the roof was designed to handle the weight of several feet of ice and snow. In fact, it was designed to not allow large amounts of snow to pile up on it. So, what happened? The first answer came from a group of Dutch engineers and experts who went live and announced the massive amounts of steam inside of the building, which would normally gather just below the roof, found its way through the concrete and caused the steel to rust very fast. After all, the whole place was like a giant steam bath. The experts pointed out that the park either didn't keep track of the steam and related ventilation, or it didn't have a system in place to deal with the serious steam issues. The park's architect, Nodar Kancheli, who had designed the structure and was also the first to claim that terrorists likely attacked the attraction, never answered that question. However, Russian investigators followed up on the Dutch's experts' opinion and they found that indeed stress corrosion caused the serious cracking in the concrete. They also found that the stainless steel fasteners and other steel elements used to support the roof's immense weight were also rusted very fast due to the constant presence of steam. All of the park's managers, builders, and architects were questioned time after time, and in the end, charges were laid against the chief architect Nodar Kancheli, as well as the municipal boss Antoli Voronin, who directed the inspections during the construction. However, as years went by, and Kancheli never admitted any guilt or wrongdoing, but he received an amnesty during the 100th anniversary of the State Duma of the Russian Federation, and the criminal case against Voronin was dismissed by the Moscow prosecutor's office for lack of credible evidence. To this day, it's not particularly clear how the steam inside the park went unchecked for nearly two years. To overcome the trauma and the sadness, a new domed water park called Morion was erected on the same site of the doomed old park. Morion Aqua Park is considered today to be one of the best and most frequented parks in Moscow. So, what do you think? Did somebody hide the truth? And is it fair to the families of the victims and those who sustained serious injuries? Let us know in the comment section below. And thank you. Thank you for watching and make sure to like, share, subscribe, hit that bell button, and all that good stuff that literally every YouTuber ever tells you in every video. So yeah, if you do though, we'll take you to the heart of scenes and mysteries from some of the most terrifying incidents, accidents, disasters, and paranormal events from around the world.